You're listening to Three Things to Know with Stephanie Haney, with experts and insiders on what you need to know in Northeast Ohio. Hi there, everybody. Welcome back to the Three Things to Know podcast. I'm your host, Stephanie Haney. We are back after celebrating our one-year anniversary last week, over a year now, of doing the Three Things to Know podcast. I'm so happy to have you here. I'm so thankful that you guys keep coming back. We keep hanging out and talking about cool things and cool people that we need to know about here in Northeast Ohio. Now, you know, for the past several weeks, we have been following The Bachelorette. That's because we have had not one, but two Ohio guys on this season of The Bachelorette. They're competing for the love of Michelle Young. Well, last week, our last Ohio guy went home. Last night, if you watch the episode, she's down to just three guys. So it's really down to the wire next. And we do know that next week we will see our Ohio guys back on the Men Tell All episode that's coming up. That'll be on Monday, actually. This season of The Bachelorette, they did something a little bit different. They've been airing it on Tuesdays, but typically airs on Monday, so they're going back to that for the Men Tell All special next week. But the guy that we'll be talking to today is Northeast Ohio's own Rick Leach Jr. He's 32 years old. He is a graduate of Walsh University. And we're going to find a little bit more out about his background. I'm not sure where he came from before ending up at Walsh, but I do know that he is a Northeast Ohio guy. So he's going to tell us about that. He's coming on the podcast. He works in sales. Right now he's been living in Los Angeles. He's getting his executive MBA at Loyola Marymount University. If you've ever been to LA, by the way, I think that school is in probably the best location. It's in Playa Vista. It's absolutely gorgeous. Stunning. Not a bad spot. Not a bad spot to be studying up and uh, getting that MBA. So good on Rick for that. But we're going to talk with him. He's going to tell us about his experience, his time here in Ohio, where his family is now. And I want to talk to him about how his family felt about some of the things that he revealed on The Bachelorette because he did share some very personal stories But the thing about a personal story is it's not necessarily just your own story, right? His family was involved in that. So I'm curious how that how that worked out and what his family had to think about that. And also what he thinks about his experience, why he thinks it didn't work out with Michelle. A little bit about him, his situation. Is he single? Where is he planning on settling down? Those kinds of things. People want to know these things, you know. He has opened up his life. He's let us know that he is, you know, at least, uh, well, at least he was searching for a partner, searching for love. So very excited to get to know a little bit more about Ohio's own Rick Leach Jr. He's here with us now, so let's not wait anymore. Let's bring him right on in. Rick, thank you so much for being here on the Three Things to Know podcast. Thanks for your time. Appreciate it. Yeah. uh, Excited to talk with you, learn a bit more about your experience on The Bachelorette, you know, competing with a lot of guys for the love of (laughs) Michelle Young. Now, before... We get into all of that, and there's a lot to cover there. Uh, I'm going to ask you, how did you end up on The Bachelorette in the first place? Uh, I would say it was just supposed to happen, is my thinking. Um, It was a little bit of a last-minute thing, and uh, everything just came together so quickly. And uh, I had known Michelle being on Matt's season. Uh, I just loved her personality. I loved the type of person she was. And so I was very intrigued to an opportunity to meet her and, and see where things went. All right. All right. Well, you are a Northeast Ohio guy. You're a graduate of Walsh University in the North Canton area. That's actually near my hometown. How did you end up at Walsh? Yeah, I actually transferred there. Um, so I originally went to a school called St. Vincent College, but then I grew up in Monroe Falls, Ohio. Um, I was familiar with Walsh and uh, I ended up transferring closer to home, just missed home a little bit. And uh, I met a lot of good people at Walsh University, the professors, the people there. And um, it was cool to see them uh, make a statement and like support. So that was kind of cool to see on LinkedIn and things like that. So very thankful to be a part uh, and an alumni of, of Walsh University. Yeah, for sure. You know, proud, uh, proud alumni myself of the Canton area. I went to high school down in there in the Perry area. Where did you start at? How far away were you before you transferred back to Walsh? Uh, so in regards to the school I went to, you're talking about St. Vincent? Yeah. Uh, so that was in Latrobe, Pennsylvania. Probably about two and a half, I think it's around three hours, if I remember right, drive uh, from where I lived in Ohio. Um, I, just a liberal arts school, good school, uh, but just I originally was trying to play football there. And I ended up not playing football. So the whole reason I was going there, um, I decided not to, uh, uh, since I wasn't going to play football, I decided, you know, it's better to be closer to home. And um, I really, it was, ended up being a great decision. Uh, learned a lot uh, from a lot of great people and 
made a lot of good friends uh, closer to home as well. Okay. I think a lot of people can relate to that too. There's a lot of people who maybe go a little bit further away for college, end up coming back home. So for sure, definitely vibing with a lot of people there. And now you're out in Los Angeles. I know you're working on yeah. your executive MBA at Loyola Marymount University. How's that going? It's going great. Um, very fortunate to have had the opportunity uh, to to pursue my executive MBA while uh, uh, working full time at BioVenice. Uh, I love learning. And I love trying to just grow and and, and get smarter uh, and just improve myself each day. And I've really had that opportunity by doing the executive MBA at Loyola Marymount and uh, the people there also. Uh, I, I have high praises uh, just for how dedicated the the staff is uh, to the students. How, how was that with doing the show? Were they good about you giving time off? Did you have to take time off? Did it line up with breaks? It finished up in May, actually. So it was nice. Uh, it was it was perfect because I was doing it on Saturdays uh, full time, eight to five. Uh, and it finished up in May. So that was one of the reasons I said uh, just timing was everything. And so the show just kind of happened after that. And uh, it was perfect. It was perfect timing. And just I've been looking for alternative ways to try to find uh, someone uh uh, that could be my potential uh, person uh, for the long term, uh, other than the apps, uh, I'm kind of tired of dating apps. So it was, a, it was a great opportunity to try to do something different. Yeah, I think a lot of people would probably agree with you on that one, too. <laughs> the yeah. dating apps, not so fun. Probably not going to be so fun for you now either, now that, you know, no. your name is out there, your face is out there yeah. a little bit. So, all right. Let's take it back to your experience on the show. <laughs> Going into that final rose ceremony, we all saw it on TV not that long ago. It seemed like you were pretty confident in the relationship going in. So what was it like when you realized, oh, I'm not going to get that rose? Yeah, it's very difficult. What you saw on TV is what I was feeling. Um, I thought our, uh, the relationship I had built with Michelle, I thought it was strong. But every guy there had a great relationship with Michelle. Um, I was actually really happy for Rodney uh, getting that last rose, um, but uh, I was very fortunate to meet Michelle. I was very, I was very excited to meet Michelle, someone that we got along so well personality-wise, and I did feel very confident in our relationship. Um, it just wasn't in the cards for us to keep that thing, uh, that relationship going, and it was okay though. She's the type of person that I connected with so well that I just, I really just wanted her to be happy, and that's why I want for her still to stay. So. Um, I'm thankful for the opportunity to meet her, opportunity to get to know her and just share some of those memories that we had uh, that you saw on the show. Sure. Yeah. We're going to talk more about some of those specific things that we saw, which <laughs> were some quite wild moments, actually, yeah. for, you, for you guys on this season in just a moment. So you're in L.A. now. Is that right? Yes. Yep. Okay. Yep. I live in Hollywood right now. OK, so you're from the Stowe Monroe Falls area. Where are your mom and your brother at right now? So my mom and my brother uh, live in North Carolina. Uh, my mom lives in Pinehurst, and then my brother's in Charlotte area. Okay. It sounds like uh, you're, we're literally like on the same tour of life, by the way, <laughs> Rick. I lived out in L.A. for a while, spent some time in North Carolina. So beautiful. North Carolina is absolutely beautiful. Do you, yeah. get, do you get to visit them out there? Yeah, I try to visit my mom once a year, at least. Uh, oh. It's it is beautiful. Um, I love being outside and just enjoying the simple things. And there's a lot to enjoy in, in that uh, realm of things, especially in North Carolina. Uh, so it was, it's nice to have family. I have family all over really. And I'm very fortunate to have that. Um, always try to be thankful, but like, it's nice to have family all over in the sense that you get to travel and, and see these people uh, or make that time. You have a reason to go to these places. Yeah, absolutely. Now, what's your relationship, if you don't mind me asking, like with your mom and your brother right now? Is it, are you close, would you say? <laughs> yes, uh, my mother and I are very close. I really appreciate her. We don't see eye to eye on everything, and we understand that. But um, we are the type that definitely loves each other at the end of the day. We're family at the end of the day. And that's the same with my brother. My brother and I um, have had our ups and downs for sure. But uh, we're on the rebound, I would say. After the show, I've definitely made an effort to try to make sure that uh, we never lose that relationship or, you know, it, it never uh, I, dwindles, I guess, is the right word. Yeah. When you were on the show, in your one-on-one -on -one moment with Michelle, you know, you really opened up to her. And because you were opening up to her, you did do that on the national stage. Did your family <laughs> did your family have any feelings about sharing those personal moments? Yeah, I think um, it was uh, <laughs> not the well not the most well received, uh, I think, statement that's ever came out of my mouth that my family's heard. 
um, I think I was opening up and trying to be vulnerable with somebody that I think see potential with, and they understood that. But at the end of the day, family comes first, and um, I think it's 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 tough to hear some things, um, especially when. I didn't get the chance really to give him a heads up, uh, I would say, as much as I would like to. Uh, but my family, I mean, at the end of the day, we're going to be family, but it was uh, it, it was tough. Let's just put it that way. It was definitely tough and something that I had to talk with family about and just kind of tell them where I was coming from and those kind of things. But I, I want to be honest in, in that moment, even if it was going to be difficult for me later down the road, which it was. Yeah. And how are things now? It sounds like things are okay now, now though. Yeah. You know, you guys are – nobody's, like, iced you out or anything. No, no one's blocked yeah. you. <laughs> no. Family wants to be heard. I mean, and I I heard them out, and then they heard me out. Uh, and I think I, – I, we we are family at the end of the day. We're a family that's very close. And even if we have things that we disagree about or we, or we don't um, see eye to eye on, we still know at the end of the day we're going to be there for each other. Yeah. Well, it did seem like it was easy for you to open up to Michelle. And you had mentioned that. You said it was something that felt easy for you that hadn't maybe felt easy in the past or you hadn't been able to do it all in the past. What was it about Michelle that you think made it so easy? I think so. One thing I, I say uh, on the show is um, she listens to understand. She doesn't listen just to respond. And that's not something that everyone in this world knows how to do. And that's one of the first things is she did that from day one. Um, and she really tried to understand everyone that uh, from that, I guess, was there in, uh, in regards to trying to build a relationship, those kind of things. I, uh, I always felt comfortable with her. Uh, I didn't feel like she was going to judge me. Uh, there's certain people I think I've spoken with previously that um, not just in a relationship setting, but I would say no matter what setting, you feel like you might be judged right away or that kind of thing. And so with her, it never felt like that. It felt like you're just having a conversation with someone that um, might, that's just going to take it for what it is. And and then, but the thing is she asked like really good questions afterwards and really wanted to understand. And that's where you feel that comfort level where you feel like you can share anything. And I felt that uh, with her very quickly. It's all about the follow-up questions sometimes. <laughs> In sales, I've had to learn that for sure. <laughs> um, okay, so I have to ask, going into this, you know, you said it hasn't felt easy with other people. What's your relationship status right now? Are you single right now? Single for sure, yes. Okay, what's your dating history been like? Have you had long-term <laughs> relationships? Uh, my longest relationship, believe it or not, is nine months. Um, I feel like I'm a person that understands what I want and I'm not a big person on trying to waste time. Like, I try to be upfront and honest with people. Uh, I would say when I said it hasn't been easy before, I, I think it's, it didn't feel natural or like, I, I think some things are feel forced in relationships at times and nothing felt forced with her. So that was the thing that I really loved about our relationship is everything felt so smooth and, and just at ease. Uh, I loved our one, one date because of that. It, it was nothing that was like anything crazy or there wasn't a lot to it. We just kind of enjoyed being with each other. And that was awesome feeling to have. Um, but past relationships, uh, I, I think I've dated, two or three girls in the last five years. So I um, haven't really dated a lot, I would say. Um, I'm okay being on my own. And I, I know that I can be um, selective in who I choose to date. And so uh, I get some, uh, you know, some crap uh, from my friends about that kind of thing. But I just, I don't want to settle and I'm not going to settle now. And, uh, I just want the most. And I think you get this life once. So you might as well uh, get the most out of it. Well, there's a lead for every pot. I believe that. Yes, for sure. 100%. For sure. Uh, so, what's the what's the mood right now? Are you taking a break from dating? Are you like seeing what happens? Are you open to something right now? <laughs> I'm a person that's taking it one day at a time. I would say, um, just try to see what goes on and, and go from there. Uh, I think definitely probably taking a little bit of time just to gather my thoughts. And I mean, this is a, a definitely a unique experience, and it's it's tough to. Um, I think reflect on everything and it takes time. So I don't know. I, you never know if the right person comes along, I, I'd definitely be open to dating that person. But, uh, one of my goals, I think that's prevent me maybe from dating is I, I want to get back to Chicago. 
Um, I used to live in Chicago uh, a few years ago, and I want to get back to it. I think that's where I want to call home for the future. So uh, that is on my mind lately. And I figure if I started dating somebody out here in Los Angeles, uh, I just wouldn't, I don't know, I wouldn't be doing that person right because I don't want to stay in Los Angeles kind of thing. Yeah. In case, in case they want to be whisked away, unless they want to be whisked away to Chicago with you, potentially. Okay, so for the Chicago ladies listening, what's your sign? When's your birthday? <laughs> I'm the last day of a Pisces, so I'm March 20th, 1989. Okay, all right, March 20th, 1989, ladies. There you heard it, in case you want to do your charts. <laughs> okay, right? Rick, I want to ask you about your entrance on The Bachelorette. Yeah. Where did you come up with the idea to roll in there with your head on a silver platter for our Bachelorette, Michelle Young? That is a prime example of me thinking I have a good idea and then not thinking about the consequences. Uh, <laughs> but um, I was trying to think of the way that I could introduce myself differently and make an impression enough that I could get someone one time. Um, you're not guaranteed one one time with that person that night. But if you get someone one time, I felt like if I got someone one time, I'd be able to establish myself and, and let her know why I'm here and be real with her. And, and I thought by doing that, I'd be able to get uh, to that first night and I get sent home because that's you don't want to sacrifice that much and then uh, get sent home that first night but I worked in restaurants a lot of time I've worked in a uh, in service industry and so I tried to use some lines that uh, I formerly used maybe as a server or bartender previously and uh, it made a good impression and I'm glad she didn't slam the thing back in my head that was my biggest concern but I didn't think about it until about three seconds until she lifted the lid up so I'm happy that I didn't come back on my head and uh, create any, uh, you know, head wounds or anything like that, you know, but um, it was a it was a blast doing it and just had fun with it. I'm a big dork at the end of the day. I just like to have fun with it and, and take life easy. Uh, so it was a good way for me to show that to her, I think. Well, listen, we're happy that you didn't get slammed in the face with that thing either, because that's what we were talking about. We've been following your journey, of course, because you're a Northeast Ohio guy. And we were talking yeah. about it on the recap. And we're like, man, my reflex would have been to yes. slam that thing just right. just because of being startled. Right. Just oh, because of being for sure. I, I'm so thankful. So that was the biggest thing I thanked her for afterwards. I was like, just thank you for not hitting me. <laughs> that's always a good start. Always a good right. start to a relationship. Right. So I can't ask you about the moment you stepped out of the limo and saw her for the first time right. <laughs> but right. when she yeah, did lift it up and you saw her for the first time what was that like for you after you yeah. got over the fear of being hit in the face with the <laughs> right right um it was tough to think again i mean like uh she caught me off guard the dress she was wearing that night was gorgeous and uh she just she's like a breath fresh air um i think she's a very unique person in, in regards to her personality but also how giving she is and just how she really tries to understand everyone and anyone. And uh, that teacher mindset that she has really does well in relationships as well. Um, I loved uh, every second of it because I was nervous as heck and I, I hadn't been nervous in a long time. So I knew we had got start, gotten started off uh, on the right foot. And uh, it just led to obviously a, a great relationship um, that we had on that uh, during that time period. Well, you know, uh, we talked with Spencer Williams on the podcast, too. He's from yeah. the Cleveland area, and he told yeah. me that you actually rolled up on him in that table thing on the first yeah. night and interrupted <laughs> his time with her. Uh, so now I have to know, how long did you have to stay in that thing before you got time to chat with her? Too long is the easiest answer for sure, uh, but it was, it, was a, it was a bunch of hours, uh, probably four or five hours, honestly. Uh, it was a long time. Uh, knees and hips were definitely sore the next day, uh, but obviously it was well worth it. it it did what i was hoping for i just i should have thought about you know uh the consequences behind uh being in a cart for that long you know uh the <laughs> soreness and stuff but no it was a ton of fun i enjoyed it that was a great night and i'll remember that for the rest of my life uh and i think america will too whether i like it or not kind of thing <laughs> oh yeah that's something that's going to come up when you do find that special person you end up getting married that's going to pop up in the wedding for sure, <laughs> for sure. right like, for sure there's no time. doubt about it you know all right, so let's talk about some of the other moments throughout yeah. the time on The Bachelorette. Before we talk about the more intimate moments, you had to do some really weird stuff. You had to eat some fermented herring. You were in like this G-Force simulator. There was the farming yeah. date. Uh, are you doing okay? Are you, <laughs> how are right? you after all of that? Actually, I think like all those unique experiences added to the whole experience as a whole. Um, definitely had to do some weird things, some odd things that I would never have to do in regular life. But I think like it tested you it like did you want to truly be there you know you're gonna have to do some weird things you have to prove yourself a little bit to michelle and show like you know you truly want to be there and so i think it added to the whole experience as a whole and um 
it was just amazing. I mean, those things I'll probably never do again, a lot of them, <laughs> but uh, they were a blast to do. And I think it added to the relationships I have with some of the guys, um, just a lot of great guys there. And uh, it shows the type of woman that was there as well. I mean, it, it attracting those type of guys there. So a lot of good friends amongst the, gen the gentlemen that were there. And uh, I was very happy for the guys that were able to uh, make it further than me and, and, this, and try to see where the relationship uh, went with Michelle as well. Sure. Well, uh, Spencer did tell us that you guys were roommates for at yeah. least a bit of your time there. How wild that he was from right. Cleveland and you're from the area too. Is there uh, any other particular guys that you really vibed with that you think you'll stay friends with? Oh, I mean, there's a lot of them. Um, so Spencer was awesome. Uh, him and I hit, hit off being from Ohio together. Uh, and then I definitely love Leroy. Um, Leroy is a great guy. Uh, just an amazing person. Rodney, same way. Uh, Rodney's got a heart of gold. Uh, I would say Casey's an awesome person. Um, Will is a great person as well, even though he got caught up in some drama, as you saw. Uh, Daniel's great. PJ's good. Um, uh, I'm trying to think of all these guys that I really do enjoy being around. Um, but the whole the whole group, I would say, uh, just great people. Alex, good guy too. That's uh, I believe he's in South Carolina. But um, there's a lot of people I really enjoyed being around, and I do hope to have those friendships for a long time to come. You know, it is kind of, I think one of the fun parts of watching The Bachelor and The Bachelorette is kind of seeing the buddies that come out of it. Yeah. Like some of the best duos, like Becca Tilly yeah. and Joel Fletcher, for example. You may not yeah. have seen that one, but that's that's one of my kind of favorite duos <laughs> to come out of the franchise. It's hilarious, yeah. It yeah, is fun it, it's so it. funny to see how these uh, the people from so many different backgrounds connect, uh, different pathways, different cities. And then, you know, you can't keep them apart afterwards, you know? So it's like, it's pretty funny. And um, I'm definitely looking forward to seeing how our friendships kind of grow as well. Yeah, well, you're bonded in an experience that only a handful of people in the in the country have been able to experience. So that's probably yeah. helpful to keep those ties strong there. Now, we usually see... Like I said, we see the contestants get to know each other very well. We see those bonds form. Do you feel like you and Michelle really got to know each other genuinely on the show? Yeah, I would say the one thing that helps is like the, the lack of distractions. Um, so you're really focused on the relationship that you can build with Michelle. And there's not a lot of things um, outside of that that you're focused on during the time period that you're on the show. And so... I really felt like we did have a really great connection. We really got to understand each other and understand what we want in this life, understand um, some of our goals, our life goals, but also how we got to become the people that we are. Uh, and I think that really helped us connect even further. I really think uh, Michelle and I had a great connection. I do think we'll be friends. Um, I think she's an amazing person. She deserves the world. And I think she's going to get it, um, whether it's with somebody from the show or not. If you could put your finger on it, if you had to, and I don't even know if you can, do you think that there's something that you could point to for why it didn't work out with you and Michelle? I just think uh, the connection was stronger uh, with other people. Um, the connection between her and I was was a great connection, but I think uh, for whatever reason, she just had a stronger connection with a few others. And um, there's nothing I think I could have done anything differently to kind of uh make ours stronger make ours better um sorry dog is uh trying to get some attention um uh, <laughs> but uh i would say yeah i i think i left it all out there and that's that was my goal is i didn't want to like hold back and have regrets or anything like that and i think she appreciated me for that but it also helped us understand that maybe we aren't the best people for each other but um we we are gonna have a good relationship and we had a great relationship so uh yeah, no regrets, and uh, I would say just I think she just had better connection with some others. That is such a great, mature, adult message to take from dating that two people <laughs> can be two wonderful people and just not be the vibe, just not be the right yeah. people for each other in that moment. Yeah, I think uh, I've had a lot of life experience, uh, just good life experiences that have helped me learn throughout life and, and mature in, in, in ways to help me understand um, situations I didn't understand the same way as I did when I was uh, younger. And so definitely have a, a great um, takeaway from this whole experience and just thankful for the opportunity because um, Michelle is not someone that you get to meet often or Michelle, there's not many people like Michelle. Sure. And uh, you, you kind of said this, but I got to ask, yeah. no regrets, no moments no. you looked at and you were like, ooh. No, I think the only regret I might have is on the football field, making the face that I did when I was screaming. Um, that was, uh, 
I've had more memes created from that uh, than I think anything else. And uh, so maybe uh, work on my face, uh, my facial, I guess, look when I'm yelling. I don't know. Uh, just think next time before I yell out loud, I guess, or something. I don't know. Yeah, think next time before you're trying to impersonate the ultimate Viking. Obviously. Right, yeah. How, who Leave it to Clayton that? for that, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so it might be a little bit of time because of the way these seasons stacked out. You know, we had back-to-back seasons of The Bachelor. It doesn't always work out that way. If you get the call, if you yeah. get asked to go on Bachelor in Paradise, what do you think? Are you going? Uh, one day at a time. Life can change real quickly, and I think I learned that this year uh, before the show even came. Uh, it became an opportunity for me. Uh, and so if that day comes, uh, I think uh, – I think there's a definitely a possibility, uh, but there's a lot of factors, you know, am I still going to be single or, you know, where will I be? And is it the right timing for that type of thing for me? Uh, I, I think like when we make plans in life ahead of time, life can kind of laugh at us and be like, ha ha, please. So um, I think one day at a time and I'll figure it out from there. Okay. Well, the next time that we'll see you will be on the men tell all special that's coming up very soon. You'll see Michelle, you'll see the guys. Yeah. I know you can't tell us what you would say right now, but yeah. do you have something in mind that you might like to say, or is that something you're still thinking about? I'm thinking about it for sure. I think uh, it's also going to be something in the moment. I mean, I haven't seen her in a while, and um, when I see her again, uh, it's going to bring back a lot of memories. So I think I'll just go with whatever my heart is feeling at the time and, and see where it goes from there. That's usually most people's nightmare is running into their ex, but it sounds like it will actually maybe be a nice experience for you guys. She's an amazing person. I mean, anytime that I get a chance to see her, it's hard not to smile. All right. Well, we look forward to seeing that. That's coming up Monday, December 6th. We'll see you on the Mental Law Special. We'll see Spencer Williams on the Mental Law yeah. Special. Looking forward to that. Of course, we'll recap it the very next day. And uh, well, we look forward to see what's next for you, Rick. <laughs> Thank you so much for it. being here. I appreciate your time. Thank you, Stephanie. I appreciate it. Uh, I'll talk to you soon. You know, I kind of really give it to these to these men and these women that go on The Bachelor and The Bachelorette. Like I said, for a lot of people, it's kind of your worst nightmare to be confronted with your ex, but they go through this process, they open up their lives on national television, they put a lot, a lot out there publicly, and then they got to come back after it's all said and done, you know, and for all but one person, and sometimes not even one person, sometimes it doesn't work out for anybody, you got to come back and you have to have that sort of maybe uncomfortable experience talking with that ex. So I'll be looking forward to see how that goes for Michelle and her men on the season, especially for Spencer Williams, especially for our Rick Leach Jr. Thanks again to him for coming on and sharing so much more about his life and his experiences and his outlook with us. And you know, like I said, he is a graduate of Walsh University. So that brings us to the general area for what you need to know in NEO this week sharing a bit of a hidden gem. You might not know about it if you're not from the Canton area specifically, because it's not like these things get a, a lot of publicity, but the William McKinley Presidential Library is in Canton, Ohio. It's about seven miles from Walsh University, so about a 16 minute drive. It's about, it's south of that. Obviously a little bit further if you're coming from Cleveland or you're coming up from somewhere else here in the Northeast Ohio area. But William McKinley is one of seven presidents who is from Ohio. He was our 25th president of the United States. He was born in Niles, but he lived in Canton. So that's where he started his career. That's where he met the love of his life, Ida. That's where he was living when he ran for president and won. So that's where his monument is. And it is such a cool space. So much happens there in Canton. Uh, one particular part that I loved about it when I was little is there's a very cool planetarium and little science museum right there. That was a big point of interest for him. So they have that part about there. So that's so that's very cool. But something else that you'll see is it is kind of a community gathering space in the Canton area because it's kind of the unofficial workout spot. It's got a lot of steps and it's totally a thing to run the monument steps in the Canton area. There are 108 steps to be exact. So I have been there. Not a lot, but a few times running those steps and doing different things. And there's also a really cool little walking track that's right around there. It's sort of tucked back in. It's pretty near the Football Hall of Fame. And around that walking track in the holiday season, they do light it up. So it's a cool place to walk through. And there's little roadways you can drive through, too. And you can see kind of a, a small, not 
huge but a small holiday light display. That's something fun and also it's a great spot for 4th of July fireworks. It really is a cool little community location in the Canton, Ohio area. So I recommend that you check that out. It is also, if you are a history buff, it's the final resting place for President McKinley and his wife Ida. Their remains are in some marble coffins. They're on an altar in the center of the rotunda. And if you go during opening hours for the museum, you can actually go inside the monument and see that. There's some other cool things in there, like one of the rocking chairs that he sat on when he was campaigning for his presidency in Canton. It's a cool spot. So if you want to check that out, it is McKinleyMuseum.org. And that brings us now to a good follow for this week. And it's only fitting, since we've talked with two of her ex-boyfriends now, that we tell you about Michelle Young. You can find her on social media. She's actually not been a super avid social media person. She just got on Twitter for the show, and you know, it's seven weeks into the show now, so not very long. So her Twitter handle is Michelle Young. She's doing a lot of live tweeting for the show, so check that out if you want to watch her live tweeting for the couple episodes that we do have left before we find out who she ends up with of her final three men. It will be interesting to see. And she's also on Instagram. Her Instagram handle is also Michelle Young. And she's pretty new to Instagram, too. She just joined Instagram. Here's something that I looked at immediately. I went to her Instagram page. She only has 40 posts. And I thought to myself, oh, she probably deleted everything, you know, to just clean things up a little bit. You know, take back a little bit of personal information, not necessarily suggesting she had posted anything wrong or problematic, but maybe just some stuff that she does, didn't necessarily want out there before she takes the national stage, right? Well, she only joined in April of 2020, so pretty seems pretty legit that she's just not like a huge, huge social media person, so it's not going to blow up your feed if you start following Michelle Young and you want to stay up to speed with what's going on with her relationship and Sometimes, you know, I think a lot of times, actually, that's a lot of the fun of it, too. You know, I told Rick, it's fun to see how the friendships build on these shows, but then it's also fun to follow the couples afterwards when they're navigating real life and what that's like and what that means. So if you want to do that, you can follow her on Instagram and Twitter, at Michelle Young. She's only got 40 posts on Instagram, and most of them, all but two of them, are from the last year. So she kind of, she picked it up about a year ago when... She started out on The Bachelor before she joined the uh, cast as the lead of The Bachelorette. So that's where you can find her. That's our good follow for this week. Thank you guys so much for being here. Hey, we have some really cool, interesting guests coming up as well. You know, it was great talking with Rick today. Next week, we will have Chef Michael Simon for you. He's telling me all about his brand new cookbook that comes out in the middle of December and a new show. Spoiler alert, he literally buried the lead on this into our conversation. He's got a new show coming out on Food Network. It actually comes out the same day of his book. That's December 14th. So we'll talk a little bit about that. And it has an Ohio connection. The person he'll be working with on the show is also from Ohio. And then after that, very excited for this conversation, we have Cleveland Mayor-elect Justin Bibb coming up on the podcast. So get your questions in to me for Justin Bibb. Would love to know what you want to ask him as he prepares to take on as the second youngest mayor of the city of Cleveland take on all that responsibility. Really looking forward to that. And if you're liking the show, this is the perfect time to give yourself a gift. Give yourself the gift of subscribing and leaving a rating and a review. Actually, that would be a gift for me, the rating and the review part, so that we can connect with more people here in Northeast Ohio because that's what it's all about. We really wanna grow our community here on the Three Things to Know podcast. I am thankful for you. I hope you've been enjoying the show and I will see you back next week with more Three Things to Know. Thanks for listening to Three Things to Know with Stephanie Haney from WKYC Studios. Subscribe now to stay in the know.